ain't nothing but a liar. Thank you, Jesus. He's a liar. Even when he tells you something that's true, he's a liar. How many know that? Thank you, Jesus. God has not called us to die. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. But we're going to live until our time up. Hallelujah. We're going to live out all our days. Thank you, Jesus. How many want to live out all their days? I'm going to live all my days. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And if you got a mind to die, I rebuke you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If it's on your mind to die and give up, I rebuke you. Hallelujah. I rebuke the devil at you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is in your heart to die early? I rebuke you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's more to live. It's more in life. Glory be to God. And God has called us to life. He said, be that faithful until death. And the Lord will give you a crown of life. How many want a crown of life today? Hallelujah. I do. I want a crown of life. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not looking forward to dying. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on into agreement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Let's get rid of this old dumb spirit. Hallelujah. Let's, let's cast that spirit down because it come from, it don't come to do you no good. Hallelujah. Ain't no praising God from the grave. Ain't no glorifying God from the ground. How many know that? Uh-uh. When you get to the ground, it's over. We rebuke that spirit now. We rebuke that demon of give up. In the name of Jesus. I might say, I'm just ready to die. I rebuke you. I want you to know that. Satan the Lord rebuke you. Thank you, Jesus. When you got in you, well, you feel like you ain't got nothing else to live for. I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because God gives you something to live for. Every day you wake up, you got something to live for. Hallelujah. I rebuke it now. Hallelujah. Old spirit of death. Hallelujah. Old spirit of death that just want to just come and just cause things to just dry out. I rebuke you now. Old spirit, that just a low, lifeless spirit. I rebuke that demon now. No life. Hallelujah. No, no zeal, no passion, no drive, no joy. I rebuke that spirit now. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. I sure ain't going to encourage that demon. Hallelujah. I'm not going to encourage that demon spirit. Hallelujah. And say to the Lord, rebuke you. Get your mind right in the name of Jesus. Get your spirit right in the name of Jesus. If dying is in your spirit, get your spirit right. Thank you, Jesus. Dying on your mind, get your spirit right. That's a demon riding you. Thank you, Jesus. Get him out of your spirit. Get him out of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And look around at everything God then gave us. Look around at life. Look, it's a whole lot to live for. Is it not? It's a whole lot we can live for. A lot. You open up your eyes, it's a lot you can live for. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let the devil just ride you and just, and just kill you. Hallelujah. He'll just, he'll kill you if you let him. The, power, the life and death is in your tongue. And he'll, de he'll definitely ride you on to the grave if you let him. Is that what you want? All righty. Hold on. We'll be there in a minute. Hallelujah. That's why you got to turn off some of this music. Because it ain't doing nothing but declaring death over your children and over you. Over your life. You got to cut off some of these sounds. Because the devil don't mean nobody no good. Nope. He get all in this music and stuff. And most people can't do nothing but hear that beat. But that, them words is going in your hearing. 
And in them words, ain't doing nothing but speaking death over your life. And you getting seeds of death planted. And before you know it, you weary, wounded, sad, and your whole conversation is about how you want to give up. And how you want to just lay down and die and give up the ghost. That's a demon getting, that didn't got in your spirit. Yeah. It ain't nobody full of the Holy Ghost got no business talking about how they looking forward to dying. If you ain't you, that's you, you ready for hell. See, the Bible said that that death, he rode on a, on a horse and, and, and uh, hell followed him. Hell followed him. Yeah, that's who followed him. That, but that's what, that what the enemy ain't going to let you know that. And when you're looking forward to death and you're seeking him, that ain't nothing but a witchcraft demon, honestly. You, you, you got a spirit to conjure up death, waiting on your time to get out of here. That's your mindset. You're just waiting to die, waiting to, waiting to just give up everything. And that's all you got. You think that's all God got you here for? Just to sit here and rock to death and die. Oh, my God. That's a spirit of witchcraft. And we bind that witchcraft demon. We bind that spirit of the, to, to, to kill God's folk. We bind that old demon spirit in the name of Jesus. It's a witchcraft spirit on these children. That's why they're getting these guns and doing what they do, killing up everybody. The old man from Walmart, the man that went into Walmart, had just bought the gun. He goes in there, and then he, he writes a, 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 a note. And at the end, of it, he talked about the folk. He talked about what he was going to do, who he was going to kill. And at the end of his note, he said, God, forgive me for what I'm, forgive me for what I'm about to do. You see, you hear that? That's the devil. That's what he do. You say, Lord, for, Lord, forgive me for what I'm about to do. That's a demon spirit. And then go in the store and kill people. And when he killed the folks, he, he got enough bad spirit in him to where he killed himself. That's, a, that's, that's, that's demonic right there. It's pretty demonic. We, what we're seeing is demons in the world. Hallelujah. But what today what I want to talk to the people about is what about, you, what about, uh, what about your, your, your end? Hallelujah. What about your end? Thank you, Lord. What about your end? After you done did everything you're going to do and you done wrote, wrote your plan out, Wrote your suicide letter. Thought about everything you're going to do. What about your end? That's, some, that's, some, that's, some, that's something to really, really think about. As you done did all you're going to do, and you done thought about it, and you done, you, done, you done sat down, and you done considered. See, the people, uh, see, I, 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 I imagined something early this week. And what I imagined was a people, and it's, it's pretty much what we see today. The people, they were going about their own business and enjoying their everyday lives. They were devoted to their own families, their jobs, and every hobby that brought pleasure. Sadly, there were many, uh, there were not many, who had it in their hearts to serve God. They all considered it, but after consideration, they made their choice, which was to continue devoting themselves to everything else instead of what God had commanded, which was devote yourself to him, which is what we call holiness. Being saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, and being fully devoted to God, meaning following holiness. Not, and, and, and one thing I want to add to this, not teaching your children about God and taking them to church is a major disservice. 
And not only that, but you yourself living right. You yourself living saved. It's a major disservice. You do your children a major disservice when you don't bring them up in the fear and, fear and, and admonishment of the Lord and teach them about God. When you don't teach them about the Lord, when you don't teach them what they need to know and put something down in them continuously and not just the once a week thing, but let it be continuously. You're talking about God and constantly pouring in God into them, into their hearts, into their spirits. When you don't do that, you do a disservice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody on the live, everybody on this call, I want you to go and tune in to the, the Facebook live and share the video. You can tune in to one, uh, the Facebook, or you can tune in to the YouTube. I'm getting ready to log off of, uh, of the call, but I want everybody to go on and interact there and make sure you share the video. So thank y'all for uh, the prayer. Hallelujah. But we're going forth tonight with Cry Loud Monday. Make sure you share the video in your groups and, and prayer groups. Hallelujah. So when you don't teach them about God and bring them up in the way of God, you do them a horrible disservice. We, we cannot give Satan anything that he can use. He uses, he, he uses already what's in us, what's sown in us, those seeds that's sown into our minds, into our spirits, into our hearts. He, 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 he uses that. And so when you allow your children or listen to any and everything, watch any and everything around your children, your children know any and everything, and there is nothing that's hidden from them. They ever, they're just open to any and everything. You ain't doing nothing but setting your children up for Satan to use them. With their young minds, they got young minds and their minds are not developed. You get you making every opportunity for the thief to steal, kill and to destroy. You helping the devil. That's what you're doing. When you telling your young daughters and teaching them how to get get down and, and, and shake their behind and telling your young kids if the teacher do this, you need to do this instead of teaching them what's right. You are helping your kids be a two a child that's ready for hell that's what you're doing and I, and I and I'm not saying this to hurt anybody or, or offend anybody but if it offend you then do something about it so where it can stop offending you make it to where it no longer offend you and how you do that is by doing something about it start doing the counter of what I'm saying Hallelujah. Start doing the counter of what I'm talking about. Start doing what you've been doing wrong. Start doing right. Where you've been teaching them how to cuss, encouraging them to fight, buying guns, taking them to gun ranges, teaching them how to do all these things. They ain't, ain't they, they mind ain't strong enough. And, he, and ours ain't strong enough for sin. And, 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 and what you're doing is, is you, you allowing them to pick up on things and even the music you allowing them to, to, uh, to listen to. You don't see nothing wrong with nothing that they doing that the world got to offer them. But what, you don't see anything wrong with nothing that they're doing. No, with the music they listen to, with the movies they watch, violence, you don't see nothing wrong with it until something bad happens and then everybody calls on God. But what are you doing in the in-between times when you got all of the opportunities in the world to sow good seeds into your children? Because foolishness is bound in the heart of a child anyway. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. They already born into sin, and you just going to shape them right on into iniquity. You going to shape them and help the devil destroy your generation. That's what the parents do when they say, well, I don't see it like that. And you turn on the sound and the sound plays and get in their little spirits and they grow up with this seed because nobody ever got it out. Nobody ever took them to a place to get delivered. They never even went to church. You never took them around to sanctify. Well, God said there's an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You never took the time to take them to get prayer. You didn't want nobody praying over them unless they were speaking good things and blessing them. You never wanted anybody to prophesy or, or wanted anybody to, 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 to tell them warning, to give them a warning and let them know that, that that warning comes before destruction. You never want to take them where they can heed warning, where they can 
learn the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. All you wanted to do is hear about blessings, 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 but, in, but, but what you got in return because you did not invest into your children, you did not invest into your own self, you got the result of a devil. And Satan showed you what he can do when you give him gasoline. Hallelujah. When you give him a match, he lets you know what he can do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you do him a very disservice when somebody's trying to tell him what's right and you don't want him to hear what's right. You don't correct them. You don't, you don't reprove them. You don't, uh, you, don't, you don't do none of that. You don't, and you yourself don't want no rebuke. You yourself don't want no correction. You don't want nobody to tell you nothing that's right. And you do a very disservice. Hallelujah. When you're dressing them and putting them on in and everything, you do them a disservice. When you take the young women and putting them on in and everything, you do your young daughter a disservice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Yeah, when you train them up and all you can teach them is about how to glorify their body, rather than teaching them how to glorify their God, you do them a very disservice. You do them a horrible disservice. And you train them up for the thief. And the thief coming not but to kill, steal, and to destroy. But what about the end? What about the end of your children? What about the end? They go our scripture there. Hallelujah. Let's read our scripture text. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to read this one scripture here. And then we got another one, which is found in Revelation. But today we want to remind you, what about the end? What about your end? Hallelujah. Somebody put that in the comment box. What about your end? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And this Bible says in Ecclesiastes, Solomon says, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 11 and verse 9. He said, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart. And in the sight of thine eyes. Hallelujah. So be merry. Be glad. Walk everything you come to your eyes. Go ahead and do it. He said, but know thou that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. So he tells them, go ahead and do everything that's in your heart to do. You want to ride around and smoke weed and you want to ride, you want to, you want to learn how to shoot pistols and, and you want to ride, learn how to uh, carry guns and live that street life, you go right ahead. But you need to know, hallelujah, just as well as the, the old and the young, they both need to know, the old as well as the young, but know thou. That for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. But we've been living in a time, the world is in a time where judgment is not being really preached like that. So it's not preached into men's heart. It's not a part of the fear of God anymore. And nobody's worried about the terror of God. Nobody worry about the things that's going to come up on the earth. Nobody's worried about the life to come because that's not preached anymore. Uh, we, we hear a lot about our haters and we hearing about this life and what's going on now and all people worried about is what they can do now about them or their own selves. Hallelujah. And they don't understand even those that preach. They don't understand why we preaching. They think we preaching because we want our shot. We want our big chance but the reason why we are preaching because knowing the terror of God is the reason we persuade men and we're not preaching because we want folks to hear what we got to say or we want folks to know our name or we trying to expound we trying to become big but the reason we preaching is because if we hold our peace the rocks gonna cry out and if I hold my peace somebody ain't gonna know nobody they may not get the warning they, there's somebody out there that don't know that there's a devil on the loose there's some folks out there that don't know it's a demon on the loose 
Hallelujah. And Satan is a thief and he come but to kill. He come not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. He want to destroy you. That's what he want to do. Hallelujah. He want to destroy you and destroy your life. And, 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 and he's so low down, he'll do it at a young age. He don't care about you being young. He don't care about you 15, 16, 17. Satan don't care how old you are. At any chance you give him, he will take you out of here. I heard a songwriter say he'll take the baby off the mother's breast if he can. He want to stop every chance you got at becoming who God said you was. Hallelujah. Because you got one thing against you and that's death. Because after death, the judgment. And when death come, ain't nothing you can do. Everything is in a fixed state. It's in an eternal fixed state. Once death happened, there's nothing you can add nor take away. That's what the people are not hearing today. Glory be to God. And Job said, he said, if a man die, shall he live again hallelujah and, uh, and all the days of my appointed time will I wait glory be to your name yeah so if you die you gonna live again but the question is where you gonna live at what about your end what about after you've done what you've done See, they don't, they, the thing about when you, when you, when, I was going to say when you're young, but hallelujah, it's really when you don't have wisdom, when you, when you, when God ain't in you, you don't think like this. You, you, many times you don't think about the aftermath. Glory be to God. You, you do things and you don't, you don't think about what's going to come later. Hallelujah. Like the, like the woman that go to the abortion clinic. She go to the abortion clinic and she kill her little unborn child because she want to just get rid of the results of doing things she most of the time had no business doing. And But she forget about all the years after. How, the devil don't make you think about the coming to your mind, the fact that you killed something that God said don't kill, which is life, which is mankind. And when you don't think about that, Hallelujah. But I show sure thank God for grace. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God that he will forgive you. But there are some people that ask God to forgive them and 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 they own their way to do it. So we, that 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 right there ain't nothing but a, a blasphemous prayer. When you say, God, I had it, I'm going to commit murder. God, I done had it. I'm going on my job and I'm gonna kill as many people as I can. But God, for the sake of me not going to hell forgive me because when I'm done I'm going to kill myself. That ain't nothing but a demon and that demon got you bound. Even in your prayer you bow. Even in what you're saying and some people say well he asked for forgiveness. It's right there in his letter. I don't care what you say. When you say it in your heart God forgive me for what I'm about to do. That is not a prayer that God hears and after you're done in hell you're going to lift up your eyes and you're going to find yourself in a place where the worm don't die. Hallelujah. For every person that think it in their mind, they say, well, it ain't got a little heart. I'm just going to commit suicide. You had time to think about it. I guarantee you, you had time to think about it. Hallelujah. And I don't care if I'm talking about your family member. You got a, you, you, you got your own soul to think about. So many times we get upset with the preacher because the preacher tell us the truth. If you feel like you're going to kill yourself and go into heaven when you done took your own life, you got another thing coming. Hallelujah. Because you didn't give yourself life. So why should you take it away? Oh, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. But know thou that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Now, let's go to the judgment. Hallelujah. Let's go over to the judgment. And the judgment that I'm talking about is found in Revelation 20. And in Revelation 20, um, and, and Revelation chapter 20, starting at the 11th verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. This is after that old devil was cast into the, and, 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 and he, was, uh, he was bound for a thousand years. That we, we see what's called a, 
this, this uh, eternal judgment that's happening. Hallelujah. And, and this is when uh, God, uh, Jesus, he showed the apostle John uh, in his revelation. He gave him the revelation. Hallelujah. And he only showed it to John when John was out on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, John, he began to see this vision and God showed it to him. And he says that in the 11 verses, he said, and I saw a great white throne. And many of the day, they don't, they, they hear this, but the fear of the Lord ain't even in them. So they can talk about this witch and say, wow, man, that's going to be something. And go right about continuing in sin. Yes, that's somebody that got a rebellious spirit. That's when you know you're bound by something. I don't know what you're bound by, but you're bound by something when you can talk about what's to come after and when life will be no more and if we know it and you can you can talk about hell fire and all of the above and talk about the the, the four beasts and talk about uh the, the beast and the, an, the antichrist and the false prophet and all of those things that you find in revelation and still have a mind to continue in sin i want you to know something got a hope to you glory be the name you got a lot of people like that hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. And John said, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the whole earth. He said, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Glory be to God. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Hallelujah. This is this job. Hallelujah. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which was the book of life. Hallelujah. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Hallelujah. Oh, glory in the things that were written in the books according to their works. Glory be to God. But somebody said, God ain't worried about what you do. Whatever you do for God, he's satisfied. But this Bible says you're going to be judged according to your works. And there's some folks that's, that's coming on, be coming about this 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 hell out of this bottomless pit that's done some wrong works. They're going to be and did a lot of dead works. You're going to have some folks that come up out of there that did some low down stuff. You're going to have some people that come up out of there that then died in prison and then died in the in the sea and, and then died and some of them didn't do nothing to nobody. They just died without Christ. And they're going to be coming up out of this place to be judged. And, and good God Almighty, it would have been better for them to just stay down in hell and you know that's sad when hell is a good place for you to be. It would have been better for them to stay in the sea, for the sea not to give them up. It would have been better for the quicksand not to just give them up. It would have been better, good God Almighty, if the angel over hell, over Guinea, would have just held on to them. It would have been better if the grave would have just kept power. If the grave would have just had victory over them. It would have been better if the, if, if the grave would have just kept its sting. Good God. God Almighty, it would have been better for them to just stay down there in the heart of the earth. But in this day, they're going to be coming up out of this place and they're going to be coming out. John said, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. He's talking about the Lord Jesus because God said he's ready to judge the quick and the dead. He's going to be judging the living and the dead. And this day is going to be some that's not going to taste the death. And it's going to be some that's going to be in and die thousands of years. It's going to be some that died the day before. And they're going to, Lord have mercy, they're going to have been and spent time in hell. But because their soul was in hell, they and they gonna be in their right mind thinking about all the things they did while they was on the earth. But hell is a holding place. Hell gonna have a grip on them, and they gonna be down in hell just going over and over and over about what they did in this life and how they wish they had another chance. But God have been warning them and warning them, and many of them they brought was brought up on a road to go to hell because their parents didn't heed God. They was kind of like the sons of Korah. The sons of Korah, some of them didn't do nothing. But the fact that they was Korah's descendants and the sons of Korah, they went up against Moses. And number 16, the Bible says the ground opened up. The earth opened up. And this same pit that Isaiah talked about. Wherefore hell 
has enlarged herself and she's opened up her mouth without measure, making room for the mean man and every man that don't know God in the pardon of his sins for every man that has not been born of the water and of the spirit. Every man that did evil in his life, every, every fearful person, every abominable thing, every person that wasn't saved, good God Almighty, everybody that did not believe in Christ, in Jesus Christ, who is the only name given for salvation. Somebody said, well, what about the Muslim man? If he didn't, wasn't saved by Christ, they'll be coming up out of this place. But the Bible said the ground opened up and Korah's sons went into the bottomless pit. And when they went down into hell, the ground closed up and the fear of the Lord came over the men. They knew that God was nothing to play with. They knew that Moses was a man of God. They knew that Aaron was a man of God. And the fear of the Lord was upon them. But we in a day and time now where people are not afraid to smite the man of God because the devil said if you smite the oh Lord have mercy the devil told him just smite the shepherd and you can scatter the sheep but God said touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm good God almighty so God forgive them for they know not what they do they do a dangerous thing and they don't even know it Hallelujah. They begin to talk about Moses. Even Aaron. They begin to go against Moses. And God smote them with leprosy. And it was at Moses that they was able to be delivered. Good God Almighty. But in this day and time, they coming up out the ground. Lord, have mercy. Some of the ones that looked at the preacher and said, you don't know what you're talking about. You speaking a hate speech and they was on their way to hell but they was had the devil in their heart and they didn't know no better they even told their children you ain't got to listen to that dumb man he don't know what he talking about that's that old school holiness stuff don't listen to that walking by the preacher with their hands over their ears not wanting to hear the word knowing that the word is the word of the deliverance. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. But they did not heed to know how that the righteousness of God is revealed in it. They never became the righteousness of God because they refused not. They refused to heed it. They shut their ears. They turned their music up. Hallelujah. And they didn't want to hear they turn up the rap. They turn up R&B and drown out the preacher. They turn up movies and drown out the preacher. But they did not know that time was running out. And they did not know they didn't have that much time. But instead, they smite the preacher. But they did it for Jeremiah. They smote Jeremiah. But little did they know Babylon was waited. Little did they know there was a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar that was waiting to smite the land of Judah. Hallelujah. But they didn't take heed. But God was warning them still. God had his hands out still. But they didn't take heed. In their hearts, their hearts was hardened. Their hearts became rock hard and they didn't want to hear nobody. They say, you talking that junk. We've been hearing it forever. But they was too dumb. They eyes, they was blind. They could not hear. They were without understanding. Good God Almighty, to look at the funeral home and see that it was loaded. To look at the funeral man and see that he was getting rich out of all the soul that was entering into hell. Good God Almighty, all he had to do was fix their face up, cover up their bully wounds, 
and repair the holes in the head. Good God Almighty. And thousands of dollars began to flow in his pocket. And they were too ignorant to understand that hell was enlarging itself with the same ones that they were paying respect to. Good God Almighty. They couldn't understand that hell was getting large. It wasn't getting large because more demons were being made because ain't no more demons than a third that was already taken than that third that fell hallelujah good God almighty but more men were being born every day little children they were dying in sin old men good God almighty they were too unwise to give their soul to God they were too unwise to come in they were looking at their own self and they'd be 70 and 80 but they couldn't give it up cause Satan had a halt on them they was 50 and 60 looking at the graveyard already had a funeral plan but they was too unwise to give their soul to God and follow peace with all men and holiness for without which no man shall see the Lord but they were too unwise to give heed to the book they were too unwise to give heed to God so John wrote good God almighty a long time before our day he said I saw a throne good God almighty I saw both young and old I saw them small and great they were standing before this great person that was on this throne and they was waiting waiting weeping and gnashing their own teeth gritting their teeth in agony in the wrong kind of fear because they was looking as men was going through and after talking to the Holy One of Israel they was cast into the lake of fire that burned with fire and brimstone I saw them standing there standing all over the place Lord have mercy waiting they turn to talk to the Holy One to go up to the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. They was waiting to talk to the Savior. They was waiting to talk to their last chance. Good God Almighty. And after talking, they was cast into the lake of fire. There was angels there. And the angels bound them hand and feet and cast them into outer darkness it was a sad day God God Almighty it was a horrible day there was no day like this day it was little children standing with mom and dad waiting to give answer to the big God they was waiting to talk to Jesus and Jesus was there in his eyes they was like fire he was standing there good God almighty I can see him there with a train good God almighty good God almighty looking like a holy king sitting on this great white throne his throne it was white with symbolized righteousness his throne it was all white we symbolize his holiness but holiness become his house and he's known as a righteous judge so his throne it was all white thank you Jesus and I heard he'd be dressed in all white and his vestum it'd be dipped in blood red blood I heard that he'd be treading the wine press of the fears and wrath of almighty God 
Lord bringing time to a close because time he said if I don't shorten the days won't be one soul saved so in this day he sped up time he came and he treaded the wide press and he sped time up he brought the earth to a close good God almighty because Lord, they was given in marriage, and they was being married, they was hearing things words, they were still in prophetic lies, receiving their own words, having their itching ears, heaping to them own self teachers, waiting on their own words to benefit them in this life. They did not care about the salvation of God. What a crowd, hallelujah, salvation and glory to our God, hallelujah, thou art worthy to open the book that sealed with seven seals, written within and without, good God almighty, they wasn't worried about the Lamb book of life, they was only worried about this time, Oh, Jesus. And I saw the dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said right here in verse 12, he said, I saw the dead, <laughs> some <Something> small. <laughs> he said, small and great. <laughs> Stand before God. <laughs> And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. They were judged according to God's words. That's what they were judged by. Somebody said it's in the Bible. They say you got to show me if you want me to do it. That's because they ain't got in their heart to do what's right. They got their own motives. They got their own agenda. Even even when they say it's for God, it's for them. And you can see it in their heart. Good God Almighty. But pride, it come for a fall. And destruction, it happens after a haughty spirit. And so many, they get in a haughty spirit. And you can't tell them nothing. With a built up self. With a prideful self. With a haughty self. Good God Almighty. Mighty. When you was a humble one, God was able to use you. But now you lift it up. God can use you. You're on your way to destruction if you don't turn around and repent. God, I show sure thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them. The Bible said dead. The sea he gave of the dead and Lord have mercy and death and hell it delivered up the dead which was in them and they were judged every man according to their works and the dead and death and hell them angels that was over death and hell good God almighty they were cast into the lake of fire and I can hear God tell and me right now yeah it wasn't no more hell it was a place that was called the lake of fire hallelujah what type of place is so bad what hell can go into hallelujah they tell me that heaven and earth is gonna pass away and they tell me based off the bible that hell is in the heart of the earth. Numbers tell me, and Matthew 12 and 40 tell me, Jesus said three days and three nights I be in the heart of the earth. I'm going to be down in the 
God of the earth, just as Jonah, the prophet, was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, the son of man, he'll be in the heart of the earth, I'd be down in hell, in Abraham bosom that is, for three days and three nights, I'd be down in the same place where Lazarus went when he departed his life and the rich man he looked over over toward Lazarus and he said father Abraham he said let Lazarus dip his finger in some water and cool my tongue I'm tormenting these flames and he was down in hell and Abraham said I can't help you there'd be a great gulf between me and thee if I wanted to get you I can't get get you because God has separated us so that them that are over there the children of disobedience who is in torment for all eternity they cannot come over to what we are who are the sons of Abraham good God almighty he put a gulf between us he separated the good from the evil he separated the man that was rich in heart but not rich towards God he separated the poor in spirit and the rich in spirit he separated the meek man good God almighty from the haughty man he separated us he separated clean from unclean and holy from he separated from unholy and there is a great gulf and it's fixed and I can't change a thing you died you just got to wait your punishment you died you got to wait your time good God almighty but I can't tell you it's gonna get no better you just got to wait it out but after waiting it out you find that your place get in and you find yourself before the white throne ready to go in a lake a river whoa lord burning with fire and brimstone because God the word it lets us know that it won't be water like Noah's day but it'll be fire this time hallelujah and the Bible says and death in hell was cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire Lord have mercy <laughs> Lord Jesus and God want me to let you know who's going in there and so Revelation 21 and 8 what it says is hallelujah it says but the fearful and unbelieving all the ones that said I believe God but I don't believe all that stuff in the Bible I believe God but I don't believe Jesus I believe God, but I don't believe in all that holy stuff. I don't believe you got to do all that. The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, good God Almighty, somebody said, what about that sin and this sin? But God ain't called every sin abomination. And we all know what an abomination is. Because God already said what he considered to be an abomination. Good God Almighty. We know pride is an abomination. We know when two same sex, when they go together, that's an abomination. We know that lying is an abomination. We know that there are many abominations. And the Bible says the abominable and murderers. We know that a man that killed another another man is a murderer we know a woman that kill 
a baby is a murderer. We know the doctor that performs it is a murderer. I don't care if it is a, 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 a hospital practice. The one that do it is a murderer. Because God said don't do it. Good God Almighty. The one that hate his brother, he's a murderer. The one that hate his sister, he's a murderer. Good God Almighty. And you are on the list murderer. It's probably be best for you to say, Lord, forgive me and come into my heart. I did some things in ignorance. I took a man's life and I didn't know no better. God, come on into my heart and change me, oh Lord. Make me new, God. I heard I got to be born of water and I got to be born of spirit or I will not see the kingdom of God. I got to be saved. I got to be shown up saved. I got to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. I'm going to need the power of God. I'm going to need Holy Ghost power to make it out this world. I'm going to need life. I'm going to need spirit and life. I'm going to need the word to be down in my heart. A burning fire. I'm going to need to be a new creature. All things are passed away. I'm going to need new things to be made new. I'm going to need to be a new creature. My old ways, they got to become dead. Got to be dead to my sin, Lord. So you got to help me. I still got some ways about myself that I just don't like. I know they ain't right. I got some jealous ways. Yes, Lord. I got some angry ways. Yes, Lord. I got some bitter ways. I know I can't go in with it. They tell me straight is the gate and narrow is the way. They said, few there be the enter there at. Good God Almighty. I've been living like I'm on Broadway. I've been living like I'm ready for hell. I've been living full of the devil. God, you got to help me now. I've been living like the world and I'm supposed to be saved. I've been living like the devil and I'm supposed to be sanctified. Lord, sanctify me. Find what's in my heart and root it out. Lord, have mercy. God, I'm going to need your help. And whoremongers of all kind. Somebody say, well, I got to show this, but the, why are you showing it? Why you want to be naked? Good God Almighty, God was really in my heart. I'm still naked. I'm showing everything that's supposed to be for my husband. I'm out here trying to show my shape. I'm trying to show up like I did when I was in the world. God, I'm going to need your help. I got saved, but my life Life didn't change. I got saved, but I didn't get taught. I got saved, good God Almighty, but I still want to show up like the worldly man. I still, I got a twitch in my eye. Good God Almighty, is something wrong with my hand? I keep touching the unclean thing. Lord, have mercy. My hand hands in some place ain't got no business my body and beds ain't got no place being good God almighty I'm safe God but something wrong with me I'm still touching I'm still rubbing I'm still bumping with folks that ain't mine ain't got no papers on them God the preacher say I'm a whoremonger but I don't believe it. Somebody, they never told me what a whoremonger was. Whoremongers, good God Almighty, all those. 
that do horrid things. Good God Almighty, oh mongoose, you already know what they do. Good God Almighty, the hip shakers. Good God Almighty, Lord have mercy, courting this fella and courting that fella. Five husbands, Lord have mercy. I, when I get tired, I drop him and get a nothing. When I get tired, I drop her and get a nothing. I'm not committed to nobody. I just want to be having sex. All I want to with any and every fella, any and every woman. Good God Almighty. I don't want no wife. And even if I do get a wife, I'm unfaithful to her. I'm talking about whoremongers. Those are them that have part in the lake. Good God Almighty. Somebody said, God know I got needs, but you don't got enough need to get married. Those that wax wanting in their own lust, they wax white hot all night long. They wax hot even in the daytime watching they love novels. Romantic films Knowing they ain't got no husband By the time bedtime come They calling over their lover You ready for the lake And you don't change You ready for hell And I ain't gonna stop preaching against it Until God call me home I ain't gonna stop Because you wanna keep going Somebody got to have enough courage To stand up and tell you. Every cabal can't be no coward. God don't need no coward soldiers. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. They're going to be standing there young and old. You got some young whoremongers. You got some old whoremongers. You got some 70 and 80 year old whoremongers. Because after 70 and 80 years, they still don't want to get married. They just want to do the sexual thing, but don't want to tie no knot. And sorcerers. You got a whole lot of them. You ones that got your spiritual rocks. Hallelujah. Spiritual prayer, prayer, your prayer uh, bracelets. Letting the sun charge your, your, your rocks up. Hallelujah. Letting the sun charge the rocks up. And our children, they in danger of this stuff. Because there ain't too many preaching no more. We don't hear nothing but bless me, bless me, bless me. But the devil is filling the world with nothing but ungodliness. Witchcraft, sorcery, a lot of this stuff is in the church. Folks that's supposed to love God, but they don't know no better. Getting in positions and praying and I'm meditating and this is how I'm doing it. Waving a wave offering with my hand. All kind of crazy stuff. I word is for good luck. Witchcraft. Sorcery. You on the list. Salt. Pouring salt in front of your door. Cross your window. In your yard. Witchcraft. And all these folks doing all these spiritual exercises on social media. Call me for your spiritual reading. And your, I want to give you some spiritual card readings. That's witchcraft. And them people are on the list. You on the list. And we live in our life like hell is not real. Because it ain't in us. We, nobody put it in us. And we live it like we're going to live forever like folks ain't getting out of here. 
We living like we don't see people dying every single day. Like the devil ain't getting in these kids and they killing up their whole family. Getting in a man or a man kill his whole family. Getting in a woman and she killing up her kids. We living like Satan ain't doing what he said he was going to do. Seeking to seek whom he may devour. Find him a man. To do his will, which is to steal, kill, and to destroy. That's what Satan is doing. And he's doing a pretty good job. He's real busy. He's getting these children because their parents, they're too lazy to even take them to church. They're too busy trying to enjoy their life. They won't even put God down in them. And they think oh, some, um, God ain't going to do nothing that we're supposed to do. He gave us this commandment to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart. And many of us ain't putting nothing in the kids. And we think these kids going to magically be fine. Because we don't care. We don't care about nothing but right now. But folks, both folks are leaving that right now. Every day, they dropping everything in this life. They dying to buy a house, dying to have a nice car. Lord have mercy. Just dying. Don't even got no plans to be dying, but just dying. Ain't even ready to die. Just dying. No soul assurance or nothing, but just dying. No Jesus, no Holy Ghost, but they dying. They ain't saved, they ain't sanctified, but they sure enough dying. Ain't in nobody church, but they dying. Some of them ain't never been saved, but they dying. Leaving the club and dying. Half dope and dying. Liquor in their refrigerator and their cabinet and they dying. Blood in their mouth and they dying. No plans to live for Jesus and they dying. The love of God ain't in them nowhere and they dying. He that is filthy, let him be unfiltered still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And they die unjust. And they die in filthy. And we tell them rest in love. Because we're too crazy to read the word of God. We don't read the word for what it say. We go off our own feelings. And what we want to put people in our own mind. But little do we know, he said, I saw a white throne. And it wasn't no imagination. It was a real white throne. Because time was no more. It wasn't no more. I wonder if it's true. The mystery of God was no more. One no, no more imagination and having what well, maybe he is and maybe he ain't real. One no more of that. Because the Bible said that, that it hid, hid, they hid their faces from him. They was afraid. They were standing there, but they couldn't die because death... <sighs> Death had flee from them. Death ain't had no more job to do. He ain't had nowhere else to put them. He too was waiting to be judged. Hell was waiting to be judged. And they was all just standing before God. Can't you see what I'm talking about now is real? It's in a book, but it's real. And you just going to keep on enjoying your life like you good and you know you ain't where you're supposed to be. You know you ain't saved. If you die tonight in hell, you will lift up your eyes and you know it. 
You know you ain't saved. You know you ain't sanctified. And you know you ain't full of the Holy Ghost. You still lie. You still cuss. You still do everything that the sinners do. And you think you on your way to heaven. You living like an unjust fellow. And you think you're going to die and go to heaven. That old angry spirit still drive you. And you on your way to heaven. And you doing just fine. But no unclean thing will pass over it. Hallelujah. No sin will enter in. Sin is sin. It don't matter who is in. Got these church people that's churchy, but they cuss. Churchy, full of loss. And I wasn't trying to rhyme. They churchy and they do everything that the world do. And they're going to own their way to heaven. And you looking at these folks getting up out of here, killing up their whole families. That's a demon spirit. That's what, the, that's what a demon do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I might as well tell you the rest of the list. And idolaters. Yeah, these old idolaters folks. You know, folks that's making everything a God, putting everything before God. You an idolater. That's what, that's what an idolater is. When everything get in the place of God, the only thing left is idolatry. When you put stuff before God and, and you say, I love God, but everything else come before him, you are an idolater. Uh-huh. I'm talking to you. Somebody said, let's go to church. No, I ain't going to go. Uh-uh. Somebody said, let's go. We finna pray. I don't feel like doing that. Let's say, and you say, I love the Lord and I love serving him. But somebody said, let's go to the movies. Let's go to the, let's go to the game. Let's go. And you can't, won't nothing stop you. Because that's what you love. Because the love of the world is in you. But when God is the question, that come last. But you lie and say you love God with everything. And you just a liar. And liars are on the list. And I don't care if you get mad. You on the list, but you can get off the list. Idolaters. Idolaters, you can get off the list. Whoremongers, you can get off the list. Lord, deliver me from this old burning, burning yearning I got in my spirit. This old burning thing that I'm doing, because it ain't right. That man ain't judging me. He talking to me because he care about my soul. I hear him tonight. I got old burning yearning in my spirit. But I go to church, but it's still a burning yearning in there. I'm about to burn out my clothes. And I'm going because it's a man that I like or a woman that I like. You need to get rid of that old burning yearning you got. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And get a hold to God. God, give me some self-control. I can't control myself no more. Hallelujah. I, I, I can't even go to church with you on my mind. Can't even go to bed. Can't even lay down with you on my mind. Because he on my mind. She on my mind. Whew. I know somebody probably don't like this, but it'll help you if you let it. If you let it, it'll help you. You got some folks that ain't worried about nothing but they stuff. Losing stuff, getting stuff. And even if they die, they worried about their stuff. That's a sad life. 
They just worried about all their things. They ain't worried about their soul. They ain't worried about where they're going to spend eternity. They worried about their things. Worried about the, what they're what they going to leave in their life. As a person that needs to be saved, needs to be delivered. And you may not like it, but you're supposed to like it if you ain't saved. It's time to get saved. People are dying. They ain't playing. They dying. Death ain't playing. He taking them folks out of here. They ain't coming back. They getting out of here for real. Exiting out of here. Checking out. You probably playing, but that, the Satan ain't playing. You probably don't care, and he don't care either, but he's handling his business. You need to care enough to give your life to Jesus. And if I were you, I wouldn't wait. I would make haste. Because you could probably lay down tonight and die and lose your soul. You don't know. You don't know if tonight's your last night. They tell me that this family, they, they was, if I'm not mistaken, this family laid down. They didn't plan to die. They didn't know that their child was going to come in there and take their life. They didn't know that. But their child came in there and took their life. That's a demon. You don't know. You might lay down at night and your heart stop. Somebody said you speaking deaf. No, I ain't. I pray you live a long time, but I ain't going to be praying for you to just keep enjoying sin. You just want blessings to keep sinning. And God trying to bring you out of that sinning business and turn your life around. You that are saved and playing with God, stop playing. You mess around and fall dead playing with the Lord. You playing around like this, like hell is something to play with. Like your life is something to play with. Ain't no joking in eternal life. Lord have mercy. Ain't no, your soul ain't nothing to play with. You playing, but death ain't playing. You having the time of your life playing. Constantly just doing stuff playing. Everything you want to do is about having fun. And you ain't even saved and you think you having fun. Why is you having fun and you ain't even saved? And I ain't talking about that jack leg saved. I'm talking about the holy kind of saved. The kind that make a man live right. Come out from among them and be separate. Save the Lord and touch not the unclean thing. That type of saved. You ain't got that kind. You ain't got the real kind. You got that worldly kind. You still on your way to hell. You got that kind to let you practice sin every now and again. You still on your way to hell because he that commits sin is of his father the devil. And you don't like this type of talk, but this the rest of the word. This the part that you didn't read. Be ye holy, for I am holy. And ain't nobody going into heaven but holy folk. You ain't going to luck your way into heaven. You don't die holy, you ain't going to get up holy. Read the word. Read the rest of the book. It's in there. I didn't make this up. You got to be sure enough sanctified. Born into the kingdom of God. You got to be set free from them sinful ways. And some of us still got some sinful ways. Some old worldly ways. Some ungodly ways. And we hear the preacher all the time. But don't nothing click in our mind that say he talking to me. I need to get it right. Tomorrow might be my time. Don't you know it's a list? It's a line. I'm about to get off of here. But don't you know it's a, it's a line? 
Don't you know we in a line? Whew. Yeah, we in a line. You, you got a turn coming. You better know it. Your turn coming, and I hope you be saved. Isaiah said that the, right, the, 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 the righteous perish, and no man led it to heart. They don't even consider that he is perishing off this world to escape the wrath that's coming. And Solomon, the Ecclesiastic writer, he said, he said, I looked under the sun and I saw vanity. He said it looked like the, he said it looked like the, the, the righteous, they was perishing before time, but it looked like that the sinful man the wicked, he was prolonging his days. And the wicked was prolonging his days. He wasn't prolonging them. God was giving him time to repent. But instead of repenting, he was taking it as I'm blessed because I keep on living. And he was continuing in ungodliness. Because to, to him, God was giving him another day to keep drinking. Keep smoking, keep partying, keep shacking, keep committing fornication, keep committing adultery. He got simple and simple. Every day God gave him, he didn't think to get saved. He thought it was a blessing to keep going and sin. So Solomon said, the wicked, he was prolonging his days. He looked and it looked like his days were prolonged. Looked like the wicked man lived a long time. I wonder why he lived so long. Because God was giving him a chance. But he didn't see. He couldn't see that God was trying to give him another chance. He just was blind. So he woke up to do evil again. He was too blind to understand why he kept on getting his life spared. He kept being spared, but instead of getting saved, he kept on getting more full of the devil. Lord Jesus, God, I thank you. He just kept getting more full of Satan. Hallelujah. Instead of repenting, instead of coming to the Lord, he kept getting more full of the devil. And what so many are doing, they're just getting more and more full. And the preacher today, some of them so sorry, they'll look at you full of the devil, and they won't even tell you. They won't even preach. They avoid preaching because they don't want you to hurt you. And they're looking at you. They're looking at you and sin. They're looking at hell as enlarging itself. They're looking at folks steady dying and getting out of here. But they won't even tell you that the wages of sin is death. They won't even remind you that you headed the wrong way. You need to turn around. Time ain't forever. You got to stop what you're doing and turn around. You can't keep on going on like this. You can't just keep going to church, playing church, and thinking that you're doing fine. And you need to get saved for real. You can't just keep sitting out of church and think you're getting stronger. You ain't getting stronger sitting at home. For you couch church folk. You by yourself and you getting strong by yourself. You got to go in here to preach. How can you preach except to be sent? How can you hear without a preacher? And stop trying to get your own preacher. Stop trying to dig through YouTube and find what you want to find. And hear the word of the Lord. And God says it's time for us to get our, our lives in order. It's time for us to get our business straight. Time ain't forever. I'm talking to everybody tonight that got an ear to hear what the Lord is saying. Time ain't forever. Your time ain't forever. You ain't going to just keep on living. You looking at everybody else dying. Don't think you so special where you can't die. You ain't bulletproof. 
I want you to know there's a list. And death got your name, but he can't come until God sent him for you. But when God sent him for you, ain't nothing you can do to hinder your spirit. When he come for you, you won't even know it. You just going to cock out of here. It's been appointed unto a man once to die, and after that, the judgment. You just going to go to the judgment, and you're going to leave everything. I don't care what you got. You're going to up and leave everything. Stock bonds and million-dollar bank accounts, cars, houses, families, new babies, and you name it, just having little babies. It don't matter what you do, what you got. When your numbers come, you're going to need everything. You ain't going to be able to go back and cut off nothing. You ain't going to be able to say, Lord, hold on. My, I just had a new baby. Lord, hold on. I just got married. You going to leave everything. And you going to leave it fast. That's why you got to be ready. When your number come, you going to get out of here fast. You don't like to think uh, think about this stuff, but I'm going to put something on your mind so you can get more serious with what you're doing. Enjoy your life, but you, 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 you need to know that life is serious. Your soul is serious. It's an everlasting being. And if you ain't with God, you're going to burn for everlasting, for all eternity. Ain't going to be no reset. Ain't going to be no starting over. And I don't care who doctrine go against this. This is the truth. I don't care who ain't preaching this no more. This is what's true. You die outside of salvation, you're going to burn for eternity. And ain't no resetting time. Ain't going to be no another world coming. It's going to be over. And as much as you can say eternity, as much as you can say on, it's going to go on and on and on and on. And you just going to have to stand there. Falling for all eternity. No gravity. Feet never hitting the ground. Burning in agony. Lord have mercy. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Demons trembling and making sounds, squealing sounds and weeping and gnashing of teeth all night long. Because ain't no daytime. Ain't no such thing as light. Ain't no sun in this place. Bible said the sun going to be smitten and the moon going to bleed blood. And the elements, they going to melt with fervent heat. In other words, won't be no stars to give no light. Won't be no sun to give nothing. But this place is going to be a lake of burning liquid. And mankind is going to be that torment. <laughs> He's going to be that torment forever. And warning is going out now. Because there's some folks that's already done made it there. Some of them went there last night. And a few more went today. And they know it's real. But you don't know yet because you ain't died yet. You still got time to repent. You still got time to get your life to God. But don't you let it be said too late. 